Hello YouTube, today we'll be talking about installing an Ubuntu server in a virtual machine so that you can host your own website. And this will be from start to finish. So let's go ahead and let's, let's go on. Um, we're at ubuntu.com forward slash download. The link will be in the description. But once you're here, you just want to scroll down and there's three options. You can look at the first two. One will give you a GUI interface when you start it up so that you can manage everything through a GUI. It works the same as Ubuntu Server over here, which will be doing everything by command line. So we're going to be showing Ubuntu Server today. But in Ubuntu Desktop, you just install it and then access terminal, and it would be just like an Ubuntu Server. So after we're there, we're just going to go ahead and click on it. And this is 12.04, the newest release. And you can select 64 or 32. I downloaded the 32-bit and then I just hit start download and you can see in my downloads folder here it is completed that way it will save time now let's open up our virtual box we're using the program virtual box it's made by Oracle and this allows us to create a virtual machine and then that way we don't have to install it directly to our machine so once we install virtual box we'll just hit new and then we'll hit next and we'll select our name and OS type so this will be Ubuntu server and then we can put 12.04 if we'd like and you can see here that it automatically selects Ubuntu server based on what you entered so we'll hit next and this will specify how much RAM you want to give the machine so let's give it uh, 1024 so 1 gigabyte of RAM we'll hit next and we have to create a new hard drive, so we'll leave create new hard drive selected. And we'll hit VDI, virtual box disk image, we'll hit next. Dynamically allocated, next. And then we're just going to hit this. I will put it on my desktop, but you can leave it default here. And we'll make it 8 gigabytes, that should be sufficient for a web server. We'll hit next, and hit create. And then hit create again, and your machine will be created. Now there is one setting that we have to go through and that is our network card. So let's go to network and you see we have adapter 1 through 4. We want to enable the network adapter on adapter 1 and we want to switch that to a bridged adapter. That will allow our host machine to communicate with this virtual machine. And I just have my ethernet card selected here. If you have two, then you can just figure out which one is uh, the car that you want to select, but that is all. And then we'll hit OK on this, and it'll bring up our wizard, and this will let us select the ISO that we want to use to install Ubuntu Server. So if you wanted to install it from a CD or a DVD drive, you can just do so here, but we're actually going to hit this arrow here, and we're going to navigate to where we downloaded Ubuntu Server, and that was on our desktop, and we'll hit open hit next and hit start. Now let's just start the virtual machine and some of these windows will just pop up. You can go ahead and hit OK. And we want to hit English and we want to install Ubuntu server. And then we'll hit OK again. And this will take just a few minutes but once we're in we'll be ready to start up um, Ubuntu. So here we go, we can see that there is some activity. And we are in the install. Here we are. We'll just hit English, United States, or select whichever country and language you would like. We are going to be using English and we are in the United States. Now it wants to select our keyboard type. So we're going to hit yes. And now we want to press some of the keys. So here we have plus and try Y, W, and there is no character. Um, I believe that's umlaut, that, that's a German character, but we do not have that on our keyboard. So we'll hit no. and we do not have that character or that one and then we'll just key on through until we are done with this menu 
There we go. It selected our keyboard as being a US standard keyboard, and now it's going to detect our hardware. So this should be just fine because it's all virtualized software and it, it's working fine currently. I'll pause the video periodically um, when there are things that take a long time to initialize or continue on with. And we are back. It just had to scan our CD drive and whatnot. Now it's just loading additional components. Now it'll detect some of your networking hardware and then it shall continue. Then it's trying various methods. So we'll let it figure out what it wants to do. And we can see that DHCP has been successfully um, created and started. So now we need to enter a host name. So let's call this our web server. And we'll call it web server Ubuntu. Then we want a full name, so I'll just enter in my name. And then we want a username, so let's call this web user USER. And then we want a password, we'll just enter in the password of lowercase password. Hit continue. Then hit continue again. By hitting continue, I just hit down on my arrow keys and then hit enter and then we would not want to encrypt our home directory currently but you can go ahead and do so if you'd like now I'll set up our clock and that is our time zone And there we go, we're just loading some additional components, and we should be on our way. Okay, so now it's loading up the partitioner, and that allows us to take the hard drive that's in the machine, and then we can segment it based on what we want. So we're actually going to allocate the full space. So we're going to use the entire disk, and I don't believe we need LVM, but if you'd like to, you can go ahead and do so. And we'll select our main hard drive. That was a hard drive that created that was created earlier. It will not show your computer's physical hard drive unless you give it specific settings to do so. So keep in mind that you will not have any risk to your hard drive by doing this. And we want to write these changes to the disk. It's currently just installing some various packages for Ubuntu, and we'll unpause when it is finished. As you can see, we're almost done, and we are done. So now, it's just going to configure some other stuff, and we'll be on our way. Okay, now it's asking for an HTTP proxy, and if you don't know, or you're not behind one, I would just go ahead and hit continue for now. You can ask your network administrator, or if you know yourself, then go ahead and enter so. And as you can see, we are almost done. It was just configuring apt. And now it's going through the installation of software process. Alright, and you can see we are back, and now it's asking us about updates. So. We're going to select no automatic updates, but for security, I would do um, security updates automatically because there are things that need patching. 
So we'll go ahead and hit no automatic updates for now. And then it will continue on with the software install process. And we're back and we have our selection here. So we have some things that we can select in order to install. So what we're going to do is select open DNS server. We don't need a DNS server. We do need a LAMP server. And then we'll need a mail server. And you can check Samba file server. There shall be another tutorial on that soon. And then you could do manual package selection, but we're going to go ahead and be done with that. So then we'll hit tab to move out of the menu and we'll hit continue. Now, since we did select the LAMP server, LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So this is the MySQL portion and it is asking for a root user. So what we're going to do is create our um, password for our root user and that will just be password as it was before. Then we have to repeat it. So, password again, but this can be whatever you would like. It would probably be best not to have password as your um, name because a MySQL database holds all of your databasing information so it can be quite problematic if someone knows the password. So now let's select the mail server configuration type. You can do no configuration if you'd like, that's where, what we're going to go ahead and do for now, but this will allow things like WordPress and Joomla to externally communicate to the outside world and email um, things to uh, the recipient of those emails. So now it's just going to go ahead and do the rest of the install process. Alright, and as you can see that our install software process is at 97%. And now we're back to our install here. And it appears to have been uh, done with the install. So actually the install still has some left to go. It's installing the grub bootloader which allows us to pick our um, from a list of operating systems. So if we wanted a dual boot, whereas if we had two installations of operating systems on one hard drive at any time, this will allow us to do that. And we'll go ahead and read this. And it's asking us to install the grub boot loader to the master boot record. We're gonna go ahead and hit yes. And it'll go ahead and install that. and we're just finishing up the installation and we are done. So the insta installation is complete. If you're on an actual machine that's not a virtual machine, you can go ahead and remove the CD-ROM or whatever it is you use to install it. But what we can do is just go to devices, CD and DVD devices, and then when we reboot, we're just gonna hit remove disk from virtual drive. So we'll go ahead and hit continue and it should reboot. It'll send a reboot signal to the machine and then that'll tell it to reboot. There we are. System is rebooting and our disk is removed. So now that we're booting, I'll go ahead and explain what it is LAMP is. So there again, it stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And what Apache is, is the actual web server Linux, of course, is the operating system. MySQL holds databases, and PHP, like the PHP series that I'll be releasing soon, has a lot of nice features for writing code that can change how your server executes things. So you can have stuff like login forms using PHP and whatnot. So it's very helpful and usually goes alongside and install. It is perfect if you're going to install WordPress or any other um, blogging platform or content management system. But let's continue on with our um, install here. So now we'll go ahead and we'll sign in. So our web server Ubuntu is our host name that we just specified earlier and it is shown right there. 
and we'll go ahead and log in. Our password was again, um, sorry, our username was web user. And now we'll enter in our password. And it should let us into Ubuntu. And here we are. So it just gives us some package warnings and whatnot. Well, let's go ahead and type ifconfig, and this won't actually do much other than list our Ethernet, uh, well, networking devices. And we can see here that we've grabbed an IP address. So that's nice. Let's begin by testing our Ubuntu LAMP server. And we can test this by opening up our um, browser window in our host machine, and we can type in our IP address. Now, that IP address is, um, as you see here, 192.168.0.108. It's the one that says ETH0, and you want the INET address followed by the, the numbers followed by the colon there. So we'll type that in. 108, and we see it works. And that means that our Apache server is working and it is up and running, so um, anyone on our current network can see that. If we were to port forward port 80, then anyone would be able to see this, and they would be able to um, use the website if it had other content on it. So let's go back in our Ubuntu machine here, and we also installed another thing called OpenSSH. So let's go ahead and open up a program called PuTTY, this is a free program for Windows, so this is on my actual Windows host machine. And um, what PuTTY allows you to do is create SSH sessions and log into servers. So this is great if you're remote and you'd like to log into your server. So let's go to 192.168.0.108, our IP address of our server. Go ahead, hit open. And you can see here that the server's host key is not cached in the registry. Um, we can uh, trust this because it is our server, so we'll hit yes. And let's drag this window into visibility here. And we'll log in as web user. You can set up separate SSH logins, but we'll go ahead and use this. This should suffice. And we'll type in our password of password. And now we're in. So this is basically the same window as you see behind it, except for it's remote. So if you forward port 22, which is SSH, you can go ahead and log in as well. So that's great. We'll go ahead and close that. And we'll close that again. And now back in our web server, we're going to install something called Webmin. And what Webmin allows us to do is access our server remotely, sort of like SSH, in that it allows us to access it with a GUI-like interface. So let's start off here by typing in a command. I'll post the command in the description, but it's wget http colon forward slash forward slash pr downloads dot source forge dot net forward slash webmin sorry web admin and webmin underscore one dot five eight zero underscore all dot deb hit enter and that will download and then we'll be able to continue but that will download the webmin package. And as you can see we're back in our Ubuntu server and we're going to run our next command which will take that package that we just downloaded and install it. So we're going to use dpkg dash dash install and then that file that we just downloaded. So webmin underscore one dot five eight zero underscore all dot deb and that actually aired out on us because we need to do sudo before dpkg so we'll type sudo then dpkg and everything that we just typed this will prompt us for our password again so we'll just enter in password 
and it will begin installing because it needs administrative privileges in order to install this. So it's unpacking Webman currently. And just as a note, you can type sudo and then not have to type sudo for any other operations that require administrative privileges. That will help a lot. And now it's just unpacking. So now that that is completed, we, ha we do see errors that were encountered while it was installing. And this is mentioned on Webman's website. So what we're going to do is edit a list here real quick. And then we're going to have to install some stuff through AppGit. So we'll edit sources dot list. Sorry, it should be sudo and then vi for our visual editor. And then we want to find universe. And we have to make sure that that is not commented out. So let's go ahead and let's search for that. We can see multiverse is here. And there are, here is universe right here. So that should be fine. So that's more or less just seeing if you can um, use the apt-get feature to install these dependencies. So to escape, we'll just hit escape and then colon wq hit enter and now we leave. So now let's run our apt get code. So let's do sudo actually. And we can do sudo apt get install perl libnet dash s s l e a y dash perl and then open SSL and then lib this all of this will be in the description lib authenticate I believe or authen dash pam dash pearl and then lib pam dash runtime and libio dash pty dash curl and then apt dash show dash versions and then python by itself so now let's run that and that should take care of any of the errors that we encountered earlier so let's wait for that to install and we'll see now it did give us an error when trying to run that command and so what we want to do is run apt git dash f install but we have to have sudo in front of it and we'll hit yes and then just let it download this and we'll be back shortly and as you can see here, after we have run ran that command, we can see that setting up Webman has appeared. And we're just going ahead and gonna go ahead and wait on that for a while and then we'll be back after that is finished. And back now we can see that our Ubuntu server has finished installing Webman and it's given us a little message saying Webman install complete. You can now log into then HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then our host name but we'll use our IP address just like we did with it viewing it in our browser before and then colon 10,000 10,000 is the port that they use for webmin um, administration and so what we're going to do is we're going to open up our web browser here and we have our IP address so let's go ahead and just copy that or cut it then HTTP colon forward slash HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash our IP address and then that was in this case 192.168.0.108 so it's different in your case and then colon 10,000 and when we hit that we'll see that Chrome has given us an SSL error but that's alright so we can just go ahead and proceed anyway because we know that this is a trusted site. Let's go ahead and type web user 
and let's type password. And we can remember it if you'd like, but we're gonna go ahead and log in. And you can see that it's brought us to this nice control panel and it's going to give us a ton of stats on what we have. We can see that we have an Intel Core 2 Quad, we have um, our one gigabyte of RAM, our local disk space and whatnot. And Webmin is really powerful for this because you can go and just do so much stuff with all the um, options here. So we can go to PHP configuration and in a later tutorial I'll teach you how to install a CMS. So let's go into a favorite of many uh, called File Manager. It's under Others and then File Manager. It's actually a Java applet and then we'll hit Yes when that comes up and this applet will just open up for us. We can go ahead and close that. And you can see here that it's given us a whole file structure and what that actually is is our hard drive and we're just browsing through. And now in our folder of var, so you can come over here and go to var and then underneath that go to www and you can see that there's an index.html file. And so let's go ahead and hit edit here and it'll say pop up block so we'll, we'll just go ahead and click that you can always allow and you can see here that it says it works and then if you remember this is the page that we saw when we were opening it before in our browser so let's add a new line saying Apache is a cool service and then we'll hit save and close and now let's reload that page by going to the IP address yet again. And we can see that Apache is a cool service has been added because we just edited that file and it's referencing that. So that is editing Apache code and that's where a CMS would go. And then if you wanted to later you can set up um, certain file structures if you had multiple sites and that will be covered in another tutorial too. So let's go on further with some other stuff. So now when we talk about things like content management systems, we were talking about MySQL. So let's go back into our server and let's install something called PHP MyAdmin, all one word, all lowercase, and hit enter. And what this will allow us to do is access our MySQL databases through a GUI application sort of like Webmin, but it will give us a nice look and we can add databases and whatnot. And this will be great for content management systems such as WordPress, Joomla, and whatnot. So after this is installed, we will see here that we want to configure it with Apache 2 because that's what we have. So we'll hit that, hit tab, and then hit OK. And it will automatically set that up for us, which is quite nice. And now it's going to unpack and run a bunch of commands for us and we can see that PHP is referenced and that is what we're going to be using to interact with our MySQL databases in upcoming tutorials. So after this is done we'll just go ahead and show PHP my BP, PHP my admin sorry. Alright and if we read through here after it's done installing it is asking us if we want advanced options what we're going to say is just hit yes for now and we're going to say that we want a password. And this is the MySQL database and user password. Um, so this is what we entered before. If you remember when we were installing it, prompt us for the password that we would like. So we're going to type in our password again. And we'll hit OK. And for our application, this will be a password again, but you can change it to something like PHP my admin password or whatever you would like. Remember more complex is better. Hit OK. And let's type it again. And then hit OK. And now it's just writing some config files and we should be on our way. And there we are. So that is set for PHP my admin on the server side. Let's actually go to our browser, go to that IP address, then type forward slash PHP then my admin. All one word again. And here we see that we have a nice little sailboat and we have a username and password.
So let's type in our username of root, I believe, and then our password. And it brings us right to the um, database selection wizard. So remember that it is root as the password. I believe you could use web user. Um, and so here we'll be able to create databases just like on any web host. You can create a new database for a content management system or whatnot. But this is great for setting up things like WordPress and Joomla. So now that that's done, let's move on to something else. Alright, so in our Ubuntu server now, we have no configuration really to do currently. But what we are going to have to continue with is Webmin. And we're going to install a thing that Webmin calls modules that allows us to interact with Webmin in a way that's useful to the user and easy. On the Webmin page that we had up before, um, just in our web browser, any one will do. Um, we will be at our main login here. So what we want to do is expand unused modules, and we want to find the unused module called Pro FTPD Server. And it can say that it can automatically be installed. Let's go ahead, click there, and it'll install it for us. And there we are, we can see that there's a giant log on it. It shall redirect us once it's done. And you can see here that at the bottom of that page there was some package details about how it was installed correctly. So that's great. Now if we find ProFTPD server, it's under servers, expand that, go to ProFTPD server. And then we can set directory paths and whatnot. So once we're in ProFTPD server configuration, we have a list of options that we can actually do. Let me close that. And what we can do is we'll go to miscellaneous, and we can see that there are various things that we can set to um, allow users to only do certain things. So let's go to access control. And what we are searching for this is what we want. We would like a message to appear when the user is logged in. So, this actually isn't currently in the file. There's many options to that. So, what we will do now is select our default server, and this is just on here by default, of course. And we'll just click that. And then there's miscellaneous whatnot for that. We'll try to find our... Here we are. Successful login message. So this will display a message to the FTP client when the user logs in. And we'll say, hello and welcome. Hit save on that. And now our FTP server is set up and we can log into it. So let's go to FileZilla, and this is another Windows application. I have it installed currently. You can just go ahead and start it up, and under host, we are 192.168.0.108, so your IP address, and then our username, so web user, and our password of password, and then you can leave port blank because it'll default to 21. Hit quick connect, and we are in. This is our home folder, and you can see here that we have many um, files. And if we go up a directory, we can see our web user directory under home. And now we can see our whole file structure. So let's expand this so it's a little bit easier to see. And let's go to var. And let's go to www. And then again, we see that index.html file. So this is where you can put all of your CMS files and have a functional web server just from right here. So you can put your WordPress install and then just go through the installation process. That will be in another tutorial, but this is how you set up a fully functional web server from scratch using Ubuntu Server 12.04.
thank you. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in many other tutorials.